Jamie Hayter and Britt Baker against Soraya and Tony Storm, who is, in fact, the partner. And uh, to their credit, like this was not a crowd that they were like starting to chant or anything like that. It was, yeah. you know, they accepted this was the partner. And I think they were resigned to the fact that uh, Mercedes was not coming in there. I, I don't think there were there was much that AEW could have done for this crowd to turn on the show. Um, this probably was going to be like the biggest test and they were, you know, they would have turned if this was a mystery partner revealed as anyone, but Mercedes, like, I think you would have had booze if whoever was the, the unfortunate mystery partner, not named Mercedes. I, I, you might be right. I mean, I would, I would say that, that, you know, maybe that most you would have gotten uh, silence. Yeah, Yeah. Apathy. Like this is a crowd that really wanted to be at AEW. And I think especially coming off of this week, wants AEW to succeed. So I I mean to me it was kind of clear even with something like this they weren't going to turn on the show, uh, much less even chant for Mercedes, which you got, which you didn't get any of, but it obviously helped that, you know, this was a very good match. Yeah, it it, it was in fact. Um we had uh Soraya and Storm uh being sent into the rails and then Hikaru Shida walks down with a kendo stick and she's uh, standing there at ringside. Uh, Soraya hits the nightcap and then stops an air raid crash, landing Anita Baker in the face. And then we see Storm with the hip attack, tornado DDT onto Baker and Baker manages to hit an air raid crash to Storm off the turnbuckle. Hate breaker is delivered to Storm when Soraya is in to save. And then we see Storm with Storm Zero. This time Baker is the one to save Hater. And then Rebel is on the apron distracting the referee as Sheeta slides in the kendo stick and it's in the middle of Baker and Storm and Baker grabs the kendo stick and nails Storm with it followed by Hater Aid and Hater pins Storm in 11 minutes and 21 seconds and you have Sheeta selling that that was not her plan she was trying to help the baby faces and I guess you are left to believe was she in fact trying to help the baby faces or was this her revenge for being snubbed in this match and Mm -hmm. that she should have been the partner Mm -hmm. we'll talk about mercedes afterwards but i mean first the match i i thought it was a really good match you know tony Tony storm in in particular i thought looked really tremendous here um just as hard hitting you know like i mean a lot of people i think are probably you know rightfully talking about jamie Hayter as like being the hardest hitter but tony storm i think is right up there with her um there were moments in this where I wondered if they were setting up a double turn, you know, because uh, commentary and of course Britt's promo last week was really setting up the outsiders versus like AEW originals type of angle. And there were moments in this match where because, you know, of that story and also because of Hater being so beloved by this audience, Tony Storm would cut her off and this crowd would start booing Tony Storm. So it's a direction that like I could see them eventually going to, but this didn't seem to be the case by the end because it was pretty clear that like Sheeta was the focus at the end of all of this. Um, they're dragging out this turn. If it is a turn a little bit later, but is she going to be, be the baby face or are um, Tony Storm or, or Soraya going to be the heels? Um, Soraya, I thought looked pretty good, you know, second match back um, in a much more limited spot, but I thought her confidence already improved, but obviously the big discussion coming off of this is the lack of Mercedes Bonet. Yeah. I mean, it's, <laughs> Certainly, I would say, like, if you didn't have that all sealed, I I don't know why you include that line last week. I think that, like, that was the only instance where a savvy audience that this this crowd is, is going to read into and make that assumption. But this was not a crowd, though, that felt to me as though, like, they had bought their tickets with the expectation of her coming in, which I think would be a stretch for you to make that. There was some of that. But, I mean, this card was so strong that I don't think they minded, especially after like, you know, a ladder match like that. Yeah. I I certainly would have kept the line out last week if I wasn't delivering that. I just like, what value is that? If one person tunes in next week saying, wow, that must mean like, and we do have a precedent of, you know, subtle lines that they deliver on. So Mm -hmm. if you're like, why disappoint your crowd when the option is not disappointing your audience? We got a p- couple people in the chat room saying that they there were boos at the end of the match. Like, I guess once they cut to, to a commercial and realized that the segment was over and Mercedes wasn't going to come out. Um, maybe strategic that, you know, they they decided to go to break maybe uh, quickly after that. I don't know. But um, yeah, didn't happen tonight. Doesn't mean it won't happen in the future. But, you know, tonight I, I, I don't blame them for not having her show up, but I do blame them for having that line last week. Yeah, I think that's the only like beyond that, you can't accuse them of misleading you. But that line 
it was misleading last week and people jumped on it right away. And it's just, that was a pre-tape. It's not like it was a live promo in the ring that, you know, she, she threw out a line that you couldn't take back. It was a pre-tape. Do you have an opinion on how much talk of Mercedes was originally scheduled to be a part of this entire angle when Soraya set up the mystery partner? I, I cannot imagine you're doing a mystery partner angle knowing that it's going to be Tony Storm in the end. Same. At, in, yeah. in this venue and almost a month ago that they set that up. So mm-hmm. I, I, I don't know how you could imagine that that this was how it was going to end up. The crowd seemed super disappointed with no Mercedes and were booing after the match, according to people there. Then they trolled them by turning the lights down for a few seconds while Hater and Britt were still in the ring before putting up the Rampage graphic. Okay. I mean, I can only speak for us at home that none of that was evident on on the broadcast. So to you, mm-hmm. the viewer, it did not come across like that at all. And it didn't it certainly did not affect the next segment with Jericho and company and didn't definitely did not affect the ladder match. So you can't really say that the viewer at home um, saw that. But in the building, yeah, it, it does clearly show like there were people there with the hope of seeing Mercedes. I think we all felt it collectively watching at home. Uh, at least those of us expecting Mercedes Bonet on the show when they cut the commercial break and it was Excalibur saying like, oh, you know, like it w- w- closing the segment. We all felt it. But as far as the presentation goes, it didn't feel any different. Lastly, says I wasn't holding my breath for Monet to appear. I feel that the women's division is getting to a good spot and they don't need to add more talent to the mix. They should start expanding on what they have. Those are his thoughts. I think we can obviously discuss whether or not the company needs Monet and whether or not it's a good decision to bring her in. The criticism from you and I tonight is the seed that they planted last week to tease it and then not delivering it. That to me is what I do have an issue with. Um, so anyway, yeah, I I don't have any uh, argument for her not coming in. If if I could uh, get her, I, I would want her in in my company. But yeah, it's like I wouldn't be teasing things you can't deliver because i think then then you open yourself up. if that line is not there and that crowd is booing i'm i'm looking at the company and saying listen we never tease that and that's an unfair expectation of something we never put out there but when you throw that line in last week it's fair game for this audience to read into that as other things that you have thrown out there with that intent and not deliver on it crowd boos and had they had they been much more louder and it come across on television i'm not begrudging those fans for being upset you tease something and you open the door for that criticism i'll forgive them for not having mercedes but the way the women's match unfolded left me wondering why they bothered with the mystery partner angle at all rather than just have it be a story of soraya trying to choose between tony and cheetah and what the hell was with the two front row tickets that Britt gave to soraya the one she insisted on bringing up in an interview this week they set up two angles they couldn't pay off in any way. Too bad because the woman had a really good match that's going to be remembered for bad reasons. Well, I totally forgot about the front row tickets aspect of it. I mean, that's something they didn't even bother, you know, addressing. K- Ken uh, Jong and uh, Freddie Prince Jr. <laughs> were they going to be the mystery? Um, they weren't seated together. They were they were they were individuals. <laughs> the tickets that they got. I think it's pretty clear that like this thing was intended for somebody as big as a Mercedes Monet. It might not have been her, but. Cl- it, I feel relatively confident in speculating that this was going to be set up for something big like her. Uh, and maybe at some point conversations fell through or, or just aren't finalized yet. <laughs> <laughs>